What do you think? Is this e-paper or not? Because that's a question that came up a couple of times after posting the first video of this reflective LCD tablet, the Hands Notes 2. E-ink and e-paper are often used interchangeably, but that's not entirely correct. E-ink is the name of a brand for a specific type of e-paper, but it's not the only one. The great thing about e-ink is that it doesn't need any power once an image is set. Same as real paper. And it also closely resembles the look and feel of paper. The reason for that is how it reflects and diffuses incoming light. Keep that light diffusion in mind because that will be important later on. So the whole idea of e-paper is to mimic the look and feel of paper. And that's exactly what the Hands Note tool tries to achieve with its reflective LCD technology. Same as e-ink, this screen reflects incoming light, so it doesn't emit its own light. No backlight, no front light, no blue light. Just the reflection of the ambient light to illuminate the 10-inch 200 ppi screen for best possible eye care. So that's one check in favor of it being e-paper. Another standout feature is the anti-glare screen, which makes looking at contents much easier, especially outdoors. Other reflective LCDs I've used didn't have that, which definitely was a huge downside. So this is much more comfortable to use thanks to an anti-glare display. And the third thing that the Hansler 2 has going for it, being e-paper, is the low display stack. The pixels look very close to the surface, almost like the contents are printed on the screen. And with enough ambient light, all of that put together really sells the paper-like look of the screen. After a month of using the Hansler 2, I can confidently say that it's a fantastic display for outdoors use performing better than most regular LCDs and even e-ink devices when it comes to animations and colors. Here the reflective screen works really well and is an awesome alternative. The main issue with using an iPad or any other regular LCD tablet outdoors is poor readability in direct sunlight. It's essentially useless even on maximum brightness. However, that can get a bit better once you adjust the viewing position and get it out of the sun. But even then, it's not a great experience, and those tablets heat up pretty quickly with the maximum backlight brightness, and better it rains fast as well. So having a reflective LCD solves both issues to some extent. The Hands Note 2 still gets warm in direct sunlight, but only because the sun heats it up, not because it produces much heat itself. And thanks to the missing front light, it doesn't draw any more energy than when being used indoors, which makes the Hands Note 2 an excellent tablet for outdoors use, which I've really enjoyed, especially under bright sunlight. I just wish I had it with me during my recent vacation to Croatia, because it would have been perfect for those sunny days. The main benefit compared to e-ink is obviously the responsiveness and much quicker refresh rate. With a 60Hz refresh rate, it's usable same as any other tablet. You can watch videos, play games, and basically run any app you'd typically run on any regular Android tablet, without the need to adjust any special refresh settings like on an Android e-ink tablet. So the Hansel tool can definitely deliver on the most important promises regarding the screen. There is no ghosting and it's flicker free because there's no e-ink like refresh needed. Colors are more accurate and more vibrant than on e-ink and it's much quicker than e-ink. However, there are a few things important to know here. The first one being that the rendition of darker colors can still be an issue. Watching videos or other contents with a dark color scheme can be challenging even in bright environments because those colors simply don't reflect as much light, which is the whole point of a reflective screen. It's still usable, but I think it would be better if there was an option to adjust gamma settings to brighten up the colors in general or at least the darker colors. Yes, that would come at the cost of color accuracy, but I'm sure it would help in improving the overall experience. And as a side note, while colors are generally pretty accurate compared to color ink, they aren't as accurate as on an iPad, for example. So I noticed slight color shifts with certain shades of magenta, for example, leaning more towards blue. Not a huge deal for consuming multimedia, in my opinion, but worth pointing out if you rely on the most accurate colors. But back to the proposed gamma settings. 
That's a feature that Handspring might even be able to add via software update. So hopefully they'll look into something like this. Independent of that, the contrast levels are excellent thanks to the deep black levels of the display, making for a satisfying viewing experience with enough ambient light. Which brings us to the second point, which is related to how the screen reflects light. There is a noticeable viewing angle dependency, even being outdoors. It's not a huge deal when there is enough ambient light, but you sometimes have to adjust how you hold the tablet tilted a little further into one direction so it catches and reflects the light at a better angle. At first, that can be a bit off-putting, but I quickly got used to it and did it automatically without putting much thought into it after a while. The reason why this is necessary is because light is reflected more direct on an RLCD and not as diffused in every direction like on e-ink. And that brings us to the main downside with the Hands Note 2. With how the screen technology works and without a front LED, this tablet was definitely made for the outdoors. While it's possible to use indoors, the experience is simply not ideal. It's not the same viewing experience as outdoors or with ink because you need to tilt and adjust the position indoors far more often for the display to catch the light at the right angle. Otherwise, it's just too dim. I'm not saying it's unusable, that's not the case, but it's definitely a compromise. For example, sitting on the couch with the light source in front of you and the wall behind you is enough for the screen to be too dark. And that can't be solved with a clip-on light neither because the light simply doesn't hit the screen at the right angle and it's too concentrated in one spot. So the lack of a front light just limits indoor usability and this is definitely an area where a future version could build upon for improving versatility in different environments. Even though the pixel density of 200 ppi is a bit lower than most ink tablets in that size segment, it's honestly totally fine and I never had the feeling that it wasn't sufficient. I think it mostly has something to do with the need to use the tablet with a certain reading distance to counteract the viewing angle dependency I talked about. Holding it too close will result in a bit of a brightness gradient from the light being reflected, which led me to generally just holding it a bit further away, which in turn makes the pixel density less important. Let's talk about pen support. The Hensler 2 has USI 2.0 stylus support, Though unfortunately it doesn't come with a stylus. However, the pens I have here from the TCL Next Paper 11 or Kindle Fire 11 work without any issues. There is a pre-installed notes app on here, but that's pretty rudimentary and not really comparable to what dedicated ink note-taking tablets are offering. Just a few simple features to make use of the pen support, but generally if you like to use the pen, an app from the Integrate Group Play Store is probably the better pick. The major downside though is the pen input lag. With a roughly 70 milliseconds delay, you can feel it when writing or drawing. It's still okay for quick notes, but definitely less than ideal for detailed sketching or extensive note taking. The latency honestly was a bit of a surprise because the screen itself only has a 5 milliseconds response time, so I expected pen input to be pretty fast as well. But besides missing software optimizations, I suspect one of the other reasons why the pen latency isn't lower is the Rockchip RK3566. That's an entry-level chip, the same one that's being used in the Lenovo Smart Paper, and that seems to be a bit too weak for certain applications. You can occasionally notice a bit of lag in other parts of the system as well, as a result, and with that chipset, it's also not a machine that you can use for performance-hungry games either. But with 4 gigs of RAM, the tablet is still well-equipped, so if something was loaded once, it works noticeably faster with continuous use. With 64 gigs of internal, non-expandable storage, of which around 50 gigs are usable, I'd say it's fine for the most part, but over time might be an issue, especially with multimedia content that typically takes up more space. So hopefully we'll see microSD card slot with the next generation as well. The Hanson 2 essentially runs a stock version of Android 13, so not the latest one, but still newer than most ink tablets are offering. With the security patch version of March 2024, it's also better than almost all ink devices running Android. 
There is Google Play integration, so you can install additional apps, same as on any other Android tablet. The build quality of the Handsome 2 is also convincing, and with its soft touch material on the grip and the backside, it has this nice analog feel to it. The weight of just 345 grams add to the very nice handling of the just under 5mm thin tablet. There's a mono speaker on the left side, which sounds okay but could be a bit louder. The power button is on the top, the USB-C port is on the bottom and the volume rocker on the right side of the frame. In my quick bend test, there was no creaking or cracking. However, I seem to have managed to slightly loosen the grip, so now I notice a very slight wobble when flexing it at that point again. So that's not something that happened during normal use, but with a little stress test. Which brings us to battery life, and here I have good and bad news. Good news first. As I said, using the Handstar 2 in direct sunlight doesn't draw any more energy than when using it indoors. You can sit in direct sunlight and use the tablet for hours before the battery is empty. That's something that's hard to accomplish with a regular backlit LCD at full brightness. However, battery life isn't as good as I hoped. Even the Books Note Air 3C, with a color ink screen and the battery hungry Book Super Refresh technology, would typically last a little longer than the Hands Note 2. And I'd say that mostly comes down to the 2200 mAh battery Handsbury has opted for using in the Hands Note 2. The official run times of around 3 hours of video playback and 4 and a half hours of reading are pretty accurate. So that very thin and lightweight build comes at the cost of battery life. Which, to be honest, I could live with, because usually when I'm outdoors, I don't need to use a tablet for that long continuously. But the poorly optimized standby time I actually found frustrating. The tablet drained the battery in standby, doing nothing with around 20% per day. So I didn't always have time or the need to use the hands not to these past couple of weeks. And so it was sitting on my desk for a couple of days at a time. And because of that standby drain, most of the time when picking it up, when I finally wanted to use it, the battery was empty and I needed to hook it up again. Okay, to wrap it up, Despite the mentioned flaws, the Hansner 2 is definitely an impressive device for outdoors use, with a couple of advantages over e-ink. Unfortunately, it falls short when used indoors due to the lack of a front light and a few other limitations. The tablet really shines in outdoor settings and could be marketed as an ideal device for those who spend a lot of time outside, rather than trying to compete with e-ink e-readers because it's a multimedia machine with a quick, flicker-free, ghosting-free and glare-free reflective LCD, which is good enough on its own, really. So there is no need to try to compete with e-ink e-readers, which have a completely different target audience. Personally, I really enjoyed using the Handsome 2 a lot when being outside, and I think that's a natural environment for this device. If you're often outside and struggle with other devices, then this is definitely worth checking out. Right now, without a front light, I wouldn't recommend it for indoors use. Well, it's possible, sure, but just not very comfortable most of the time. More or less comparable with in Kaleido without the front light if you manage to catch light at the right angle. So on the personal wish list for the next generation of hands breeze RLCD devices, I have a front light a larger battery, a faster, more efficient chipset, which could potentially fix most of the drawbacks I've mentioned here to make this tech a better all-rounder for everyday use. That's it. Like and subscribe if you found this review helpful. Thanks for your time watching and see you in the next one.